Hi, and welcome to Ranger Up's second video in the How to Get a Job series. In the first video, we talked about your approach to getting a job. Now we're going to get a little more specific and talk about the resume. I want you to think about the resume as a Match.com profile. Your goal here is to look attractive enough and intelligent enough to get a first date, and that first date being the interview. So with that in mind, I want you to put a lot of effort into it. Most people don't do this. They think about the resume as just something they have to do to get out of the way so they can get their job. But you wouldn't go into your first MMA fight without ever training. You wouldn't show up at ranger school having never done a road march. In every other aspect of our lives, we work extremely hard and expect to work extremely hard in order to get the outcome that we want. But yet, when, when it comes to the job market, we often ignore it. You need to work hard on your resume. This is an opportunity, not a pain in the butt. It's an opportunity to showcase that you have great communication skills. It's an opportunity to show that you are so much better than all the other candidates that are out there because I'll tell you honestly, most resumes are terrible. More importantly though, it's an opportunity for you to sort of put all of your thoughts in order, to think about all of the accomplishments that you've really had. That's going to set you up for success whether or not you get this job, whether or not you get this interview. The more thought you put into this kind of thing, the better you're going to be at the job process. Okay, so now we're sitting here and, and we're building our Match.com profile, our resume. How do we do that? The best way that I know how is using what's called the STAR format. The first, situation. What are the situations that you've been placed in? The second, task. What tasks were you either assigned or did you take on for yourself as a result of this situation? The third, action. What actions did you take towards completing these tasks? And then finally, results. What are the results of the actions that you took? Most people, when they do their resumes, are only talking about their responsibilities. They'll say things like, I was responsible for 50 soldiers and $25 million worth of equipment. Um, you've seen that bullet a thousand times, I'm sure, on OERs and NCOERs. Well, what does that really mean? Now, what is important are the actions that you took while you were in that job. What did you do? And then, most importantly, the results. What, what happened as a result of all the things that you did? Were you a success? So that's the picture that you want to paint. Situation, task, action, result. That'll get you really far, especially if you can distill it down into important things that are applicable to the civilian world. How do you do that? The first thing you need to do is put it in layman's terms. Okay, don't talk about 11B. Don't talk about SF. If it's SF, you need to say special forces. If it's 11B, you need to say infantry. You need to be clear. You need to assume these people have never been around the military and have no idea what you're talking about. And chances are they don't. So you don't want to put them in the uncomfortable position of not understanding your resume. And you don't want to put yourself in a bad position where you can't get your point across. The next thing that you need to do is quantify whenever possible. It's great to say, I succeeded. It's better to say that because of my actions, training time was cut in half. Because of my actions, we had twice the ammunition at the same cost. Because of my actions, we decreased logistic costs in Afghanistan by 25% across all similar units. Those are accomplishments that, regardless of walk of life, everyone will understand. You need to get that across whenever possible. Don't force it. Some things just aren't quantifiable. But when they are, you should try. Through all of this, you need to remember that the resume is a story. Okay, You're telling a story about yourself. It's the beginning of your Match.com experience. When you're telling this story, you need to remember that every job is different. If I am applying to be a contractor overseas as a sniper, 
now is a great time to talk about that shot I took at a thousand meters in Laos in high wind that no one else in the world could hit. If you're applying for a job as an elementary school teacher, maybe we shelve that one for now. This is the same concept we talked about before. You're walking in with stereotypes. Accentuate the positives, diminish the negatives. You want to do that in your resume as well. Keep that in mind with the things that you list as your, your extracurricular activities as well. If you're applying for a job for PETA, probably not the ideal situation to talk about the time you went on safari in Africa and shot the big four. They don't want to hear about that and it's going to hurt your ability to get the job. So use common sense as you're assessing your resume for each individual opportunity. This is a great chance for us to kind of pause and look at Tom Amenta, uh, my COO's original resume, and compare it to what we turned it into back before he came on board with Ranger Up. As a proud member of the 75th Ranger Regiment, Tom had tons of bullets that were very detailed about his time in that job function. However, he almost completely ignored his recent time as a member of the National Guard, where he actually had some pretty substantial accomplishments. All he had on paper under that was the following. Instructor at the 11 Series MOSQ course, responsible for 50 students and four cadre. Now that's definitely not the worst bullet in the world, but what does it really mean? If I've never served in the military, I don't know what MOSQ is. I don't know what 11 Series is. And so I know he was some kind of teacher. So then I started digging into it with Tom about what he really did, what were his accomplishments. And we ended up with a much more robust series of bullets that I believe accentuate his successes in that job. And so if we go and look over at his current resume, it reads a little differently. So the first bullet basically describes his job. Teach, manage, and evaluate 200 plus soldiers a year in combat tactics and goal-oriented team building. So that's w what Tom's responsibilities are. But then we get into some meat. Create, resource, and execute the unit's training schedule, which culminates in a 55-hour fake war to assess each student's tactical and technical proficiency. This plan was rated as the best in the entire Army, both National Guard and regular components. Awarded the Army Achievement Medal for setting the national standard as an instructor. So when we look at that, before we simply had Tom's responsibility in a very finite area, one class. But when we look at a macro view of what Tom's job is, he actually trained a lot more people, had a lot more responsibility. But the most important part is you can see that based on his actions, he received accolades and was rewarded. He was the best in the Army at that job function. No matter who you are, that is going to speak volumes to them. They might not know anything about the Army, but they know the Army is an awful big place, and being the best is a very good thing. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Ranger Up is going to post a lot of very specific examples that we believe are common on our website in the not too distant future, and we'll definitely let you know when that happens. But for now, I just want you to think about that as a, a possible approach to improving your resume. The final thing, after you've put all your bullets in order, is to check it. Check your work. Check it a thousand times. After you've checked it, find your three smartest friends and ask them to check it a thousand times. And when they've all said it's good to go, go ahead and check it again. Why? Well, think back to your NCOERs or your OERs. Think about how annoying people always were about it. Well, you've, it's all great, except you've got one space for these 17 bullets, but for this one you have two spaces. And you sat there and you said, does this really matter? Can't we just get on with it? Well, you can if you don't want a job. Some of these jobs that you're, you're, you'll be applying for will have 200 applicants, 100 applicants. If I'm a recruiter, do I want to read 200 resumes 
or am I looking for any opportunity to make that pile smaller? So if I get three lines in and I've already found a spelling mistake, if I get six lines in and now there's a grammar mistake, I don't know you. I have no incentive to give you a second chance. Just like on Match, when you're flicking through profiles, like you see something you don't like, you don't give it another thought. It just They just go away, never to be seen again. That's your resume. Everything has to be perfect. You need to put your best foot forward. You need to impress and give people a reason to find out more about you. Ultimately, that's what you're trying to do. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and summarize what we've talked about today. So the first thing is, your resume is your Match.com profile. It's a chance to look good. So make sure you look good. How do you do that? You put a bunch of effort into it. You put as much effort into it as you have at every other major challenge in your life so that you make sure that the outcome ends up where you want it. You showcase a history of success. How? You use the star format. Situation, task, action, result. What do we do in the star format? Well, first of all, we eliminate jargon. We don't use acronyms. What else do we do? Whenever possible, we quantify our results. People like to see numbers. They like to see how much better you made things. We remember that the resume is a story. We want to tell the best story possible for a particular job. And every job is different. Accentuate the positive stereotypes, diminish the negative stereotypes. And then finally, let's check our work. Put forth the best work product you possibly can and give them no reason to just dismiss your resume out of turn. Approach it like everything else that you've ever approached in your life and you will achieve excellence. Thank you very much. Hope this helped.